All right, in this video, we're going to take a broad overview of Fordham College at Rose Hill Liberal Arts and Sciences core curriculum. You'll see here we have this handy checklist, which is also going to be available on Blackboard, that has core courses typically listed during freshman year, core courses typically completed during freshman or sophomore year, and so on. And it provides a really helpful way for us to get started in understanding the core. You'll see here under core courses typically completed during freshman year, we have to begin the classical and modern foreign language sequence. Now, depending on whether you are a Bachelor of Arts or a Bachelor of Science student, you may be subject to or you may be exempt from this language requirement. Bachelor of Science students, so for example, biology majors, chemistry majors, engineering physics majors, would be exempt from the language requirement. However, Bachelor of Arts students, so undeclared students, students who are interested in an English major, a history major, and so on, would be subject to this requirement. The only exception to the Bachelor of Science rule is students who are thinking of majoring in psychology. And you can see here the real breadth of modern and classical languages. We have Latin and Ancient Greek, Arabic, French, German, Hebrew, Mandarin, Chinese, all offered to you to fulfill this requirement. Now let's take a look at this requirement here, Composition 2. Now all Fordham College at Rose Hill students must take Composition 2 as part of our core curriculum. Depending on your standardized test scores, you may instead need to take Composition 1 first as a prerequisite and then take Composition 2. If this is the case for you, you need to be sure to take Composition 1 in the fall so you can take Composition 2 in the spring. English as a second language students may take a college ESL writing course before being ready for Composition 1 or Composition 2, and we'll cover this in a later video. Next here we have the math or computational reasoning requirement. Most students will take either finite math or structures of computer science if they are not a science or pre-health student. If you are science or pre-health, you may take something like Applied Calculus 1, Calculus 1, uh, Computer Science 1, Discrete Structures, depending on your math placement exam and your planned uh, STEM curriculum. Next here, we have our Philosophy of Human Nature and our Faith and Critical Reason, which is a theology course requirements. Most freshmen should complete both of these in freshman year. You will take either philosophy or theology in your first semester in most cases, and then whichever one you didn't take in the fall, you'll take in the spring. These are introductory level courses that don't require any type of specific background in philosophy or theology, and most students complete both of them by the end of freshman year. If we look here at Eloquentia Perfecta 1, we'll have a lot to say about this later. The most important thing to know now is that there is no course called Eloquentia Perfecta 1, but rather there are many different types of core courses that fulfill this Eloquentia Perfecta 1 requirement. Eloquentia Perfecta courses are read, reading, writing, and speaking intensive courses that are limited to 19 students as opposed to the normal 35 students in a course. So for example, you might be able to find, and you will be able to find, Philosophy of Human Nature and Faith and Critical Reason courses that are special sections designated as Eloquentia Perfecta 1. If we look now under core courses typically completed freshman or sophomore year, I'm going to skip down to the history requirement here. The freshman history requirement is called Understanding Historical Change. It's typically completed during freshman year. As you can see, there are a number of subtitles of these history courses, Modern Europe, American history, medieval history, Latin American history, and so on. Some of these may also be designated as Eloquentia Perfecta 1. And it's worth noting that it's not possible to have fulfilled these requirements through AP or IB exams, so all freshmen will need to take one. Now if we look here at the natural science requirement, we'll see that there are two components, the physical science and the life science requirements. We're only going to address these briefly right now, and you'll see why in a moment. You'll see that for, in most cases, the physical science requirement 
has the math computational reasoning core that we just discussed as the prerequisite. And the life science core has the physical science as the core requirement. So unless you're coming in with AP credit that is filling one or both of these categories, in many cases, you will not be taking this in your first semester. Now the exception here is for science and STEM majors. So for example, if you're taking Intro Bio 1, General Chem 1, Intro Physics 1, and the like, you'll see with this note right here that the physical and life science requirements can be fulfilled through those courses. So for example, your chemistry or physics intro course for pre-health or science would fulfill the physical science, whereas your biology course would fulfill the life science core. All of these courses here that you see listed here are courses for non-science majors. These are students who are not STEM or pre-health. And all of these listed here, Intro to Astronomy, Environmental Physics, Foundations of Biology, have lab components, but these are less advanced courses than ones that science, uh, STEM, and pre-health students will be taking. Next, we have the Social Science core requirement. And you can see here the real breadth of courses that are under this social science umbrella. Everything from fundamentals of communication and media studies, to basic microeconomics, to intro to politics, intro to sociology, and the like. Many of these courses fulfill popular majors at Fordham College at Rose Hill, like economics, politics, the communication department majors, anthropology, and sociology. So this is a great requirement to use if you're interested in any of these majors, you can use these courses to explore a possible major. Now the last of the most important core requirements to pay attention to as an incoming freshman is this one here, the fine and performing arts requirement. You'll see here that these represent common courses such as art history, music history, and also some more uncommon ones like intro to opera, invitation to theater, and urbanism, which is an urban design and architecture course. None of these are performance or sort of art production type of courses. So in intro to opera, you're not going to do any singing. In invitation to theater, it's not an acting course. Uh, in, in intro to music history, you're not going to be playing music. In all of these, you're going to be uh, going through an academic study of these fine and performing arts disciplines. So uh, courses like drawing, photography, sculpting, painting, those would not fulfill the fine and performing arts requirement. It's very, very important to keep in mind. So we're going to skip down closer towards the end of our checklist. Let's take a quick look here at these distributive requirements, global studies and American pluralism. So just like the Eloquentia Perfecta I course that we discussed, there is no course that is called global studies, for example, but rather other courses that have the global studies attribute on it. For example, if you were to take an understanding historical change section in East Asian history, that would have the globalism core requirement because it is a non-American or European uh, type history course. Likewise, if you were to take a uh, an American history course that happened to have the pluralism attribute, you may expect that it has more of a focus on uh, diversity in the United States, for example. It has a bit of a separate focus. And we'll discuss these a little bit later. We're going to jump now right here to the requirements for graduation, the thing that's on everybody's mind, uh, should be on everyone's mind uh, from the beginning. You'll see that students need to complete 36 courses and this is predicated on you taking five courses per semester in your freshman and sophomore year and four courses per semester in your junior and senior years. The one exception is for students who complete lecture and labs in Intro Bio 1 and Gen Chem 1 in the fall of freshman year. Those students take one less course for 35. You have to earn a minimum of 124 credits. Now, if you do have any APs or IB scores, those will count, each exam that you get credit for will count as one course, and generally at least three credits towards both of these counts here. You have to earn a minimum cumulative GPA of 2.000. You have to complete this core curriculum, and you have to complete a major, not a major and a minor, not two majors, not three minors, just one major to graduate.